What's going on, guys? Chuck here with another awesome Blu-ray purchase. And this is a new release uh, from Screen Factory. And I was actually really surprised when they announced it. So this wasn't something I was expecting, but I'm really glad they did. And we're talking about 2010's The Wolfman uh, from Joe Johnston. And, of course, this is a universal kind of update of the classic, uh, was it 1942, Wolfman starring Lon Chaney Jr. Um, and I was really thrilled that... Uh, Screen Factory is putting this out and giving the 4K treatment, no less. And it was nice also because this wasn't like one of their catalog titles. They were just upping into 4K. But this is something completely new, uh, which is great. And it's also good because I really think this film deserves to be um, reevaluated and rediscovered, if you will. Because I really think this is an underrated, I don't want to say classic, but it's, it's, it's underrated. Um, myself, uh, I've always been a fan of werewolves. That's my big thing. Also, my favorite horror film is an American werewolf in London. I just, since I was a kid, I was fascinated with werewolves and the Wolfman. Uh, it doesn't mean I've seen every werewolf movie ever made. <laughs> There's quite a few I still need to check out. But, you know, this that whole idea of man and the beast and the Lord and all that is <clears throat> always, uh, I don't know, spoke to me. I also like the fact with the Universal, as far as the Universal Monsters go, Lon Chaney Jr. is rare in the fact that he is the only actor to play the Wolfman. You know, you've had other actors play Dracula. Lon Chaney Jr. played the son of Dracula himself. <laughs> so we had Bela Lugosi, obviously, and then, you know, uh, uh, <clears throat> um, just, I think John Barrymore, I believe it was. Um, one of the Barrymores. <laughs> I can't remember which one it was. <laughs> one it was. Um, you had, oh, obviously, Boris Karloff was the Frankenstein monster. Lon Chaney Jr. also played the Frankenstein monster. Uh, you Glenn Strange, Bella Lugosi played Frankenstein. I mean, you know, all these characters, Lon Chaney Jr. was the mummy <laughs> in, you know, the mummy sequels. Um, the only character that Lon Chaney Jr. didn't play was, you know, the creature from the Black Lagoon. But no other of these, none of these actors, no one else inhabited, you know, the Larry Talbot Wolfman character. From the Universal, which was, of course, the Wolfman, Frankenstein meets the Wolfman, uh, House of Frankenstein, and House of Dracula, and also I believe, like, even he was even in the uh, Abbott Costello, uh, was it Frankenstein or Frankenstein? Whichever Abbott Costello meets Frankenstein, whatever one is, <laughs> he's in that one. Um, <clears throat> so it's always been, you know, Lon Chaney Jr. is. Definitely, you know, he, you think of the Wolfman, of classic Wolfman, you think of Lon Chaney Jr. And it's really cool that he's the only one that got to do that, as far as the Universal canon goes. And it's kind of a film that's, I think it's good, but I'm, it's, of course, it also came towards the end. One of the later monsters was going into the 40s, obviously, as the, as the, the, the uh, golden age of Universal's monsters were starting to die out. Um, you know, obviously, you, you've had several... Uh, takes at Frankenstein. Uh, you even had, you know, the, uh, the Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. You had Bram Stoker's Dracula. Uh, but no one really seemed to want to tackle the Wolfman. So I was really excited that, you know, in 2010 that this was coming out. And I was even more excited when I heard Rick Baker was going to be doing the makeup with it, or for it. You know, obviously Rick Baker is a legend in the makeup business. Uh, he's a, <clears throat> he, he won the very first, you know, Academy Award for... Uh, makeup because of American World in London, his idol, you know, his hero was Jack Pierce, you know, the man responsible for a, a majority of those universal creatures, including the Wolfman. And it was nice to be able to see his take and his touch on the Wolfman character. Um, I think what I liked about the Wolfman, he was knowing it was going to be, it wasn't going to be like a modern day. They're basically going to make it, you know. More or less, you know, a nice updating remake, and I think you know that's really cool that it is. It is what it, it was that. Excuse me. Uh, so let me back up. So I mean, my honestly brief history with this movie. Uh, I was excited when it first came out. I did go see it in the theater, and, and this was you know, 2010, so this was quite a long time ago. And we're coming out of theater enjoying it, and I really liked it a lot. Um, but I guess it didn't do very well. A lot of people didn't. It didn't uh, catch on with audience for, for whatever reason. I, you know, I'm not really sure what it was. Um, I know some of the CGI was probably in a tendency didn't work out. 
Um, I don't know, but it just it didn't really appeal, and it's the same because I thought it was you know a pretty good movie. Um, and then sometime later, I managed you know, through a Walmart in like a five dollar bin, I found this Blu-ray DVD copy of The Wolfman. This was like the underrated director's cut and the actual cut, and I picked it up right away. Unfortunately, I never got around to watching this Blu-ray. I don't know why. I just never got it. I was like, yeah, I'll get to it. Yeah, I never did. Um, so hell on us forever, and it's never been watched. It's sad. Um, especially now that I got the 4K. <laughs> um, but what are you going to do? So after all these years, once I got this, I went ahead and popped it in because I really want to check this movie out. Cause, you know, I was really excited about this. Like, this is my chance to really see it and, you know, Reevaluate it, and I said I remember liking it, but I don't remember anything about it because I only saw it the one time. So I popped it in and checked out, and I got to tell you, I was blown away. Um, I watched the unrated version, of course. You know, first time I've seen the unrated version, even though I've had it here and never popped the thing in the player. <laughs> and um, what I love about the movie is that you know Joe Johnston and the cinematographer. I don't know who who was I. I have to look at it, but they did a really good job of capturing the feel of golden age, classic universal gothic horror films. I mean, this film just feels like an old 30s, 40s universal film just with color. I mean, some of the sets, even like the, the, the forest or the woods, whatever, it looks like in those films, you know, the old, if you watch The Wolfman or even Frankenstein you see that backdrop, and it says it looks like it's set, but that's how this looks. But not it looks so good. It just looks it's very reminiscent of that the gothic setting, uh, the whole atmosphere. You know the characters. I love that they made it. They they did do the go the gothic route. They didn't you know, make it updating like modern age telling of the Wolfman. They actually put it in, you know that period, uh, and it just it fits so well with the film. I don't know for some reason. The idea of the Wolfman, you know, this character, at least this, the Universal character, not where it was going, but it's the Wolfman, seems to fit really well in that that uh, gothic, you know, uh, era, time, or whatever you want to call it. And the film just looks beautiful. Uh, it's very atmospheric. It's moody. It really sucks you in. And, um, and I think maybe that was part of the problem why I didn't grasp on the audiences too well in, in 2010. Maybe, you know, we were starting to get to the point where it's um, a lot of younger fans or whatever who are just wanting, you know, you know, everything right here, right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go. This is a slow burn. This is a buildup. Um, and it's it takes its time, which I'm, I'm glad for. It really does take its time. And I don't know if you know, people really like that in, in, in unfortunately, or, or accustomed to that, and they just want to, you know, action, 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 blood, 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 guts, 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 whatever. And of course, the director, or see the theatrical cut, I, I, I'm assuming, because it's been a while since I've seen the, you know, the, the theatrical cut, but I know this director's cut has some serious gore and some really good gore. <laughs> um, so maybe, you know, they'll, if they saw the director's cut, they probably would have um, been so harsh on it. Um, I will say that, you know, the CG in some sense doesn't really work out. Um, the transformation seats are, are good, but again, it's 2010 CG, CGI, so it's a little eh. But that being said, the practical makeup effects, the werewolf looks fantastic. The werewolf design is amazing. It's, 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 I really think it's one of the top werewolf designs of all time. It's very reminiscent. I, I, I like that. Rick Baker, he went with the bipedal werewolf, which is what do you want to do in American Wolf in London? He talked about that, but John Lannis wanted, you know, the 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 four legged, you know, wolf kind of werewolf, which I think works for that film. Um, but again, for this uh, film, and again, if you're doing a remake of Universal Wolfman film, you want to have a bipedal werewolf, and I I, I love the look of it. It's, it. it's very reminiscent of the Jack Pierce makeup and the Lon Chaney uh, makeup. But definitely um, more modernized. Uh, it definitely has a more s sinister, snarly, uh, wild beast-like appearance to it, and it's it's so 
good. And even, you know, it's and I love that, you know, he's transforming the wolf. He keeps the clothes on like the Lon Chaney Wolfman did, you know, it ripped the shreds, almost Hulk like, you know. <laughs> and I like I think it's a great touch. It's just it's so I mean this werewolf is menacing, he is terrifying. Uh he's awesome. And I love when he's chasing after you will he'll drop down to all fours or run after you too, which is really cool. Uh but this is a this is a brutal, scary uh wolf man. So, you know, definitely the Brick Baker knocked out of the park. I think this might have been one of his last, I'm not sure when he retired, but I think this might have been one of his last um, jobs or close to it, if not. But it, it's, it's exceptional. It is a, um, it really is, like I said, one of the, you know, he's for a guy who designed the American Wolf of London, which I love. This is a great, great world for design. And kudos to Benicio del Toro. I mean, he is really good with the makeup. And then I see now, with that being said, the Lawrence Talbot character he portrays is maybe not as charismatic as he is with the the wolf costume or makeup on. First of all, I apologize. It's a little warm sweat in here. <laughs> um, he comes in a little... Maybe underperforms a bit. I'm not quite sure. Um, but... He he tries to give you the. You, you want to have a sympathy for him, like that's one of the, okay. That's one of the things I've always loved about the werewolf character, is that this is a character that, typically, at least the Wolfman in a sense, in a Miracle of London, for that matter too, this is a character where you feel sympathy for him. They're doing bad things, you know. They don't want to. They're cursed, and this is you know what. You, what is their life? And you said, how do they are tortured? That's one of the things that Lon Chaney Jr. was so good at portraying. I mean, he you just look at him, he was like the every man, and you just felt sorry for him. Like, you know, and I mean, it's in all due respect. He was a sad sack, you know, once he knew he had the curse and, you know, he just wanted to get rid of it. Um, and I think they try to give you that in this film. It, it, it's hit and miss. I think what may hurt this film. And it, in my opinion, is that they give you a villain. And you don't need a villain in a Wolfman film. That's, you know, there wasn't, you know, look at the Wolfman, look at American, American Wolf in London. There is no villain in that those movies. The villain is the curse, plain and simple. You know, you're feeling sorry for, you know, Larry Talbot. You're feeling sorry for, uh, uh, for for David um, Kessler in *America of London*, you know the curse is the villain. You know the curse, and this one, the curse is kind of like it's the afterthought because there's there's more there's actually there's a whole there's a whole other thing there's more story in this which is maybe to his detriment. You know the original *Wolfman* was pretty cut, you know simple, st straightforward uh, narrative. You know Larry Talbot comes visit his father so long. Um, he's attacked by a werewolf, becomes a werewolf, and a story. That's it, you know. It's more than that, but yeah, <laughs> that's the gist of it. This, they kind of follow that same, you know, same, uh, through line, kind of. You know, we have Lawrence Talbot, who's, you know, an actor coming to visit his, coming home after the death of his brother. He, obviously, he's had a strange relationship with his father, played menacingly <laughs> by Anthony Hopkins. Very, very creepy, menacing. A very good performance, of Anthony Hopkins. Um, you've got, uh, oh my gosh, give me, a, give me a minute here. So, I mean, Emily Blunt uh, has the, you know, his Lawrence's widow, or brother's widow, and so there's this weird, you know, thing going on, romance going on there. Um, but again, there's all these different layers of trying to add on, which I think may bog it down a little too much. Um, where it, it, does it need to try to give a little more flesh? I get you trying to flesh it out more, but I don't really think it, it needs that much. It might be, you know, burying itself under all that weight of, of extra plot, if you will. Um, you have Hugo Weaving as, you know, a detective trying to solve these, you know, crazy uh, mysteries, which he puts in a good performance. Um, there's a great cameo in the beginning by uh, Max von Sydow. Uh, who's holding the, you know, has the cane that meets Lawrence on the train. He's got the cane, you know, with the, the silver wolf's head, which kind of, you know, a little bit of a, you know, uh, 
uh, Chekhov's cane, <laughs> kind of. Um, but overall, I really think it's it's an enjoyable werewolf movie. It's an enjoyable, you know, adaptation of the Wolfman. I think it's a very good uh, and worthy remake of the Wolfman. Um, and brought up to modern times, even though it's, you know, in Victorian era. Um, like I said, it's just, it really immerses you in that, in that feel of the classic universal films. So much so, there's even a character in there. Uh, I think she's one of the victims why is like an innkeeper or something. I can't remember what, what, what she does, but, and I don't know if this was intentional or not. And it might've been, but she, her look and her performance kind of reminded me of uh, Una, Una O'Connor, who, you know, if you've seen, like, James Will Frankenstein, or, um, uh, I think, yeah, she, oh, it's not Frankenstein, she's a bride of Frankenstein, and the Invisible Man, uh, and several other films from that period. She's a very, she has a very distinct look and presence. She's got a screeching high voice. She's a very comedic uh, actress, but she was used a lot, and she's like a staple in how these films are. There was an actress that kind of reminded me of her. Like, I don't know if that was intentional. If that was what, if I'm just seeing this because I love Una O'Connor, <laughs> but that's what it reminded me of. But again, a lot of this, you know, the villagers, the the setting, the fog, the the backdrop of the forest, everything just felt like a classic universe. Even the beginning of the movie opens with the classic, you know, spinning uh, Universal logo that used to have in the 1930s and 40s. So that's a nice touch. So the nostalgia is all there. The feeling is all there. Uh, then you mix in with fantastic werewolf, you know, makeup, some great gore. I may bog down by a little too much plot, but it's a fun movie. It really is. It's a slow burn. It takes some build up, but then you stick with it and you'll be pleasantly surprised and you'll really enjoy it. And I mean, I had a blast with it. I'm glad I checked it out. And you know, and let me tell you, the 4K looks uh, beautiful. Uh, seeing you know, other, especially again, you know, the gothic setting. The um, it just it really it really makes it even more immersive. And I just I was just sucked in right away. And as like I said, that's how I automatically had that feeling of the old, you know, watching old Universal films. Not the heart want to point too much, but <laughs> but it looked beautiful. Uh, the sound. On here, if you remember, is actually a. They do have a mention here. Yeah, um, well, yeah, it has Dolby Atmos track on and a 5.1. I listen to Dolby Atmos, and it is it's subtle, but when you get to the you know the big action things, when you have the, the when the werewolf or the wolf man shows up, the the growling. I mean, it is bass shaking, and it is it'll jump at you. It's got good uh, directional sound effects. Uh, but again, that you know the 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 the, the wolf man, the, the the growling, uh, the howling, all that stuff. You know, the, the it really comes across and it blasts through the speakers, and it's it's a great great sound. Um, again, especially if you've got the full surround, um, it's a great listen. So awesome picture, awesome uh, soundtrack. Uh, so let's take a look at the what we got here physically. So here's the slip. Now, there was an alternate slipcover, um, but you know, I'm not going to buy an alternate slipcover. I, just, I actually got it from Amazon. I didn't go to get it directly from Scream Factory. For that reason, I don't need all the extra accoutrement. Just give me the basic movie. I do wish, I, I kind of miss the old days, you know, when they had like a you know, new art and the original poster could be flipped around here. They had reverse covers. Uh, they don't seem to do that anymore with the 4Ks, which is a shame, but, you know, whatever. At least we're getting the original poster on that. So here's the disc, or back cover. Here's the front cover. So here's the back cover. I'm all... <laughs> <laughs> and it is a three-disc set. So disc one is the 4K, uh, the unrated director's cut. Disc two is the 4K of the theatrical cut, which is nice. So both versions are in 4K. And then disc three is your Blu-ray, which contains both versions of the film. Um, I don't know if they were actually... Let me see. Yeah, these are the 4K restorations on the Blu-ray. So you're still getting, you know, up, upgrades from this Blu-ray. Special feature-wise, which I have not had a chance to check out special features. I had I was able to watch the movie, then I, you know, you know, life 
pull me everywhere else. I've not had a chance <laughs> to sit down and check out the special features, but I don't wait too much longer to get this out. Uh, so let's see. Uh, disc one obviously is a uh, 4K UHD unrated register cut, like I said. Oh, the new 2024 2K rest or 4K restoration, excuse me. Presented in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos with a new audio commentary with film critic Drew McWeeny. Uh, disc two is the 4K UHD theatrical cut uh, with a new 2024 4K restoration presented in Dolby Vision and Dolby Atmos. So the commentary is only on that director's cut. Uh, let's see, disc three is a Blu ray unrated director's and theatrical cuts uh, with a new 4K restorations of the theatrical and extended versions. New audio commentary with Drew McWeeny for the extended version. New of Fern Fang, folklorist and author Dr. Karen Stahl, uh, now on Werewolves and the Wolfman. That sounds interesting. I'll check that one out. Uh, new The Wolfbane Blooms Again, makeup effects artist David Elsley on The Wolfman. Alternate endings, deleted and extended scenes, Return of the Wolfman featurette, The Beastmaker featurette, Transformation Secrets featurette, and the Wolfman Unleashed featurette. Most of those are archival and are on this Blu-ray here. So there's a they've done it. There's a plethora of special features on here. So kudos to Screen Factory for you know adding a couple extras, throwing the other you know archival material on here, and you know presenting these great 4K restorations of this film uh, again that I think has been forgotten and underappreciated. I really think it deserves. A revisit and you should check it out again because it's a lot of fun and it's if you like gothic you know gothic horror films if you're a fan of classic universal monsters you definitely owe it to yourself to check this out if you have not it is it will bring back the nostalgia from that time and amp it up a bit and modernize it a bit uh, and do it very well i think so i highly recommend checking out 2010 the wolfman from universal yeah, I think you'll have a howling good time. See what I did there? <laughs> so that is it for this one. If you enjoy this, click thumbs up, share, subscribe, leave me a comment below. Uh, let me know if you've picked this up. Um, if you've even seen this, the Wolfman, what's your favorite Universal monster? You know, the Wolfman's always been my, my favorite. Like I said, I mentioned earlier, I'm very partial to werewolves. Um, and, you know, there are, you know, some are hit and miss, <laughs> but... You know, the, the the Wolfman's always been it for me. Uh, or just say hi. I'll always take hi. So until next time, I'm sweating so bad. This is Chuck saying I will see you on the other side. Oh, maybe the full moon out on me. I'm turning the world. I don't know. <laughs> uh.